Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Starbucks Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for uh, Tuesday, August 20th. And uh, it was a bit of a snoozer uh, for the day. Uh, not a lot of movement intraday and um, uh, not a lot of like huge uh, movers in terms of uh, outside of the indices, but um, but the sectors as well. Uh Risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that I'm going through is for information purposes, only not giving out any advice or recommendations. Um, everything that we're going through is for educational purposes only. So, um, you know, interesting bonds rallied a little bit. The dollar was down. Um, the VIX was up significantly. The VIX uh, was up what, 8.2% for the session. So a decent climb, but there's a VIX expir uh, expiration. So that might have something to do with it. Uh, and ultimately, I think that we're due for some backing and filling uh, that's going on. We've we've made this big run. Uh, I was making a joke about um, how the market was up, what, eight days in a row. And, um, you know, the, all the stats come out about, oh, the last time that the market's been up eight days in a row, this is what happens. Um, you know, let me break it to you. Um, it doesn't, this stuff doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter how many days the market's up in a row. And when then the, when they crunch the stats and say, oh, well, and, and after it's been up eight days in a, in, in a, eight days in a row, the odds are that the market will go up after that, uh, you know, a year later is, uh, you know, probably 75%. And I just made that number up, but the market goes up over time. All these stats, all these stats about, um, <laughs> in my opinion, about um, you know how the market goes up uh, a year later, uh, it's because you know it's kind of dumb because over time and again this is these are long term things but over one year over five years right the market should be higher from now because anytime you pull up a chart of 20 years 50 years the market goes up over time um so i hate to break it to you but you know obviously timing it and so forth and, and doing it you know perfectly is not easy but um in any event it's not a big deal um if the market went up today and would have made nine days in a row or if it broke the streak as it did today so um just nonsense um sorry just my opinion breath was weak today so very different than yesterday you know yesterday was one of the um the situations that i noticed like right out of the gate yesterday that the market was strong uh that the breath was strong and it stayed strong all day long today there wasn't really like the wind at the market's back and i think also when you look at the small caps um they really lagged today versus everything else and um we'll look at that chart in just a second but you know there's some resistance there and um that's something that that i put out in, in my morning note as well um interesting um so you didn't really have many sectors that went up today even though there's again once again there's some good earnings reports and that's kind of what i hang my hat on in terms of like okay like even if we pause here because the end of the month of august as well as september is it's a week or seasonal period um just like we saw in the beginning of the month too but there's a lot, there's a really a lot of good earnings reports and Palo Alto, Fabernet, uh, Medtronic was also a decent report too. You know, th these are names that we put right into our, um, in terms of our, our uh, earnings watch list. And, um, you know, those are names that I'm going to come back to once they dip. Um, those are usually the first names to recover, right? And the crappier stuff, you know, you usually rallies when everything else and when there's big momentum in the market. And then as soon as that that momentum is not there anymore, the crappier stuff goes right back down, right? Meanwhile, um, the stronger names kind of just sit there and consolidate. Um, so that's generally um, a little bit why I play relative strength and I play strong earnings names is because they're more resilient. Um, so number one, like they just continue to usually trend um, and outperform. Uh, and I stay away from the, the stuff that's in downtrends. Um, the stuff in downtrends, usually it needs a really big market move or some other type of catalyst like the Fed announcing that they're going to aggressively cut interest rates or uh, some type of uh economic stat that comes out and um, is much different than expectations that can get, you know, major momentum and short covering and so forth. But overall, um, I tend to really just stick with names that are doing really well. And, um, you know, I, I've done pretty well doing that. Um, even on the market dip, you know, I knew names that I wanted to go after. Um, you know, I, I bought names like FTAI. I bought names like um, I bought NVIDIA, which I sold yesterday. 
and um, you know, uh, TMDX was another name, you know, just, you know, names that um, did particularly well, among other names, obviously, of course, but um, let's go ahead and let's, let's look at some charts here. So S&P, um, we kind of ran into this, uh, this, so this is SPY, I'm going to use SPY um, today, I either use a, a SPY or um, S&P futures, but we did hit a VPOC up here. And you could see, and like this is the beauty of the of the market webs indicator, is that you could see this other gray box in here. That's from the daily time frame. So I have set up here, right? Here's my indicators. Got the mar I have two versions of the market webs because one shows you the next time frame higher, which is really useful in my opinion, because um, you could see that this VPOC came from this value area back in here, right? Right in here. Um, and that acted as resistance, right? This is, that was a value area from, I think, three weeks ago, um, at right around the highs. So again, the market kind of leaving, leaving behind some overhead supply um, that we have not revisited. And as soon as we got back to it, um, we got uh, rejected today. But overall, not a big rejection, right? Every time that we hit one of those version point of controls, it's going to be a battle between um, new buyers and um, and sellers that are out here. So here's where we are, the S and P. We're, you know, just like on a dime, we stopped at the top of the value area. So bullish eighty percent rule went into effect, right? And um, we it's been completed. So you know, it's a sense of um, you know who whose phrase is this? I think it's Jim Cramer's phrase, right? Bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So you have to, be, you know, that's the way I would kind of think about it. We've had an, a, a pretty nice run over the last couple of weeks. How much more are you looking for it without any type of backing and filling in this market? So um, you know, I could have said that a couple of days ago too. So I, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't answer that question for you. It's really a it's really a personal question about whether this was a good enough run for you, right? Because we're hesitating and we're stopping right where there's resistance, right? And um, I talked about this yesterday too. I think with Nvidia, same thing. Now Nvidia, you know, overshot a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised if this name does continue to run a little bit into um, its earnings report because that's, you know, FOMO is a big trade. And I talked about this about a week ago uh, when I went long NVIDIA and I said, you know, I'm looking for that buy the rumor, sell the news type trade, right? Where everybody wants to own this into the earnings report which is next week. Uh, so it's made a really nice move and I've taken targets, right? You know, I, I, I checked out of the trade in my uh, trading account. So that's a, that's a couple of names. I, I mentioned I would talk a little bit about the, you know, the queues. We'll see if the queues wants to continue to rally. But you've got a nice level to trade against here because this is still the bullish 80% rule. I still think this is going to be hard for this to go to the um, all the way back to the top of the value area. But you've got a level to trade against here, right? And that's four, uh, 471. You could also use the 50-day moving average if you're comfortable with that too. But overall, like I said, you know, you know, a doji like this for the day um, means a little bit of indecision by definition. And um, we've made a really nice move. So um, tomorrow we'll get, um, you know, don't forget on Friday, we're, we've got Jack, the Jackson Hole meeting with Powell. Um, here's what the uh, the interest rate projections are, or excuse me, here's what um, the market is implying right now. So if we go WIRP, right, this is what Fed Fund futures are currently implying. This has come down a little, um, about a week ago, this was about 39%. So they we were getting, the market was getting close to pricing in two cuts. And now it's kind of coming back to a more realistic 25 basis point cut. Uh, but the market is fully pricing that in for September. I do, I think that they're going to cut as well. Do I think that this is really such groundbreaking news? I've said this before in these end of day videos, 25 basis points when we're at 5.5%, really not going to move the needle too much. Uh, but it will be interesting to, you know, I, I think that they do get on some type of a program to, to you know, start incrementally dialing down that interest rate a little bit, but that's my thought. I don't know why if, if I, if it was my choice um, and <laughs> if it was my choice, I would just do 10 basis points down every, every, every um, uh, uh, Fed meeting, but they don't want to do that. Why don't they want to do that? Um, my, my opinion is because they like drama, 
I mean, they, they like to really fiddle around. Um, they could make something easy, right. And just say, Hey, 10 basis points, we're, we're going to cut interest rates every meeting, uh, you know, until, and we'll keep it that way until, um, we see something different in the data that, that prompts us to do it differently, but they, they will never do that. Uh, Janet Yellen could have done that too, when she hesitated on, um, on raising interest rates for so long. And um, you know, just make it, just make it very simple. I mean, they they can easily do that. But um, in any event, so I'm I'm going on in this video because there's really not much to talk about um, in terms of market reaction. Um, IWM, like I said, did get rejected right right into that uh, bottom of the value area. So again, that's the test. You made a nice move, right? And um, and right back in here and and getting uh, rejected. So the level to watch there is two fifteen fifty five. Um, Bitcoin, I also find very interesting. Thing. You know, I woke up this morning and Bitcoin was up like, I think around 3% this morning. But once again, it can't hold. Um, it's not it's not able to get into the value area for the month. And I kind of like, I, I I had a little bit of FOMO myself this morning. I'm like, geez, I thought about going long some Bitcoin. But um, I'll wait for that confirmation first, right? Um, and that's uh, 60,860. Um, so that's Bitcoin. And then, of course, gold. Gold finished positive today, but um, almost gave back all the, all the gains. So it is working off a breakout, and it did finish uh, positively up, up four-tenths of a percentage point, but ultimately um, decently off the highs um, today. So, um, you know, a couple other things that I'm just noticing right now is just, you know, some of the defensive areas, like the consumer staples, continue to move higher. Um, utilities, right, also grinding higher. Um, healthcare, which I've talked a lot, not the best looking candle for the day. Um, kind of looking like a, was that a shooting star candle, I believe. Um, so, you know, that could prompt maybe a reversal, but I would watch the five period moving average. So you kind of look to see what's going on here and where the market leadership is, right? This is the low volatility ETF. This is where I, I see market leadership for now, right? I also see it in dividend appreciating, Right. Companies that uh, announced that, that they've got, you know, they have dividend growth. Right. That's VIG, even though um, an inside day today and um, and things like energy are, are breaking down. Um, very interesting that that just, you know, this is even though this is kind of um, I wouldn't call it low volatility, but it's more of a value type trade. Right. And that's a big move down. Um uh, the energy stocks I've looked from time to time and said, hey, you know, I'm looking at either the refiners or I'm looking at an Exxon and they just haven't been compelling enough um, to really do anything. Uh, so, you know, again, it's all about, you know, market um, doing your research and coming to those conclusions on your own once you do the work. Right. And that's basically, um, I, I think, end of story is that uh, they just haven't acted right for a while now. So there's no need to force it. Again, it doesn't matter how underweight people are, um, you know, if they're not heavily exposed to energy. That to me ne never has been a reason to get involved in a group. Um, you know, you want to go after what's acting well. And, you know, Palo Alto, I think, was, was a very interesting move today. And um, if you look at the weekly chart too, you know it's going to be challenging those those highs. But this is not the only one in this space that's that's been doing well. Um, FTNT, right? This is a name I actually added to the TTG trend portfolio, right? So again, there's there's some strength in this group, even though I don't think cyber um, cyber did have good earnings, but um, they no follow through as they I think they finished. Uh, down on the day so they could not break higher but um you know another one that reports next week which will be interesting is octa right um and one that i've been long which i i like to be in some of these ones that like nobody's talking about but this vrns has acted really well this is a software and it's a security company um so this one has has done really well nice move up on earnings check back which is right where i got involved in it and um it's getting close to those uh gap higher uh, move on earnings. So I'll leave it there for now. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's encouraging. And like I said, even though this market's kind of chopping around, um, FN did not close on the highs, but um, which is, I think is okay if you're not in it, um, you could trade this versus 260 and see if this name wants to continue to trend. Um, really nice earnings move. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.